Proton pump inhibitors, or PPIs for short, are a class of drugs used to treat gastrointestinal ulcers. In this mnemonic video, we'll cover everything you need to know about the PPIs so you'll be ready come test day. It's a rainy day here at the Picturized Pretzel Shop, and I've been called in to investigate some suspicious activity. That's right, I'm a Personal Private Investigator, or PPI. Speaking of PPIs, you can use my job title of Personal Private Investigator, PPI, to help you remember that in this scene we are talking about proton pump inhibitors, also called PPIs. Now let's move on to learn how to recognize the drug names of PPIs for when they show up on test day. This pretzel shop has some of the best pretzels around. It's too bad that it's not appearing to be up to employee safety standards. By the way, when you think of these pretzels, remember that PPIs all have the same ending, prezol, because pretzel and prezol sound pretty similar, right? Some of the most common PPIs that you might encounter include pantoprazole, omeprazole, and lanzopretzel. I mean, lanzoprazole. Now, whenever you see the prezol ending, you'll automatically know that it's a proton pump inhibitor. So what exactly do proton pump inhibitors do? Let's find out. As a private investigator, I'm specifically interested in the pretzel shop's lemonade. The lemonade here is so acidic that it's causing a public health hazard. Before we get ahead of ourselves, let's focus on the broken acid pump. This broken acid pump is another reminder that we're talking about proton pump inhibitors. You know, since PPIs work to prevent the secretion of acidic protons into the GI tract. In other words, PPIs work to reduce the amount of stomach acid produced. Got that? As the lemonade spills out of the broken pump, it is burning a hole in this employee's uniform. I wasn't kidding when I said this stuff is dangerously acidic. Here at Pixarize, we use a hole burned in the belly of a shirt to symbolize gastrointestinal ulcers, because ulcers are essentially a hole in the lining of your GI tract, right? And they're caused by stomach acid, just like this hole is caused by the overly acidic lemonade. But notice how this employee is sewing up the hole in his shirt. This is to help you remember that PPIs are used to both treat and prevent GI ulcers. PPIs may be prescribed to people who are actively suffering from a GI ulcer, or may be given to people who are at high risk of developing ulcers, such as those who have recently undergone surgery or people taking NSAIDs. As a PPI, I'm collecting evidence by measure of the acidity of the liquid with this flask. And sure enough, the way the acid is bubbling up goes to show just how acidic it is. That's why I'm capping this beaker of acid to stop it from overflowing. You know, this beaker full of acid reminds me of the upper GI tract. I mean, we have a long, narrow portion that looks like the esophagus, and then a bigger bottom portion full of acid, like the stomach. So this acid bubbling up the neck of this flask is our symbol for gastroesophageal reflux disease, abbreviated GERD. You know, since GERD is when the stomach acid bubbles up into the esophagus, creating an uncomfortable feeling that we commonly call heartburn. Just like I'm capping the bubbling beaker of acid to prevent it from bubbling over, PPIs can be used to treat GERD. With the clinical uses out of the way, let's finish up with a few side effects of proton pump inhibitors. Now that I've officially confirmed how dangerous this acid is, I'm getting angry. I just can't believe the best pretzel shop would put their employees in danger like this. In fact, I'm so angry that I kicked this support beam here, causing it to fracture. This fractured beam represents osteoporosis and bone fractures, a side effect of PPIs to remember. You see, PPIs block calcium absorption in the digestive tract which can lead to osteoporosis and increased risk of bone fracture over time. Note that this side effect, as well as the other ones we'll talk about, are long-term effects. Patients taking PPIs for short stints usually do not experience these side effects. I was in such a hurry to start my investigation on the acidic lemonade that I didn't bother to wipe my muddy feet before walking all over the shop. I've left these smelly, muddy footprints everywhere. This smelly mud reminds me of C. diff diarrhea caused by infections with Clostridium difficile, or C. diff for short. C. diff is a bacterium known to cause severe and smelly diarrhea, just like this smelly mud here. Stomach acid usually works to kill bacteria like C. diff, so by reducing the production of stomach acid, PPIs can increase the risk of bacterial infection. For our last symbol, we're jumping back over to this broken pump that is leaking acidic lemonade onto a fan. This fan is used to keep the shop cool, but the acidity of the lemonade has caused the fan to break down. Here at Pixarize, we use a fan to symbolize the respiratory system because both are responsible for moving air. 
Get it? So this broken fan is here to represent a dysfunctional respiratory system. Taken over the long term, PPIs can also increase the risk of developing pneumonia. The reason isn't quite as clear here, but it's thought that stomach acid may have a protective effect against aspiration of ingested bacteria. Decreasing stomach acid with PPIs will therefore increase the risk of pneumonia. Don't worry too much about the mechanism here, and just remember this broken fan to remember that PPIs increase the risk of pneumonia. Alright, that's it for this video on PPIs, let's recap. Proton pump inhibitors, or PPIs, are a class of drugs easily recognized by their prazole endings, including omeprazole, lansoprazole, and pantoprazole. PPIs work to suppress production of stomach acid, which can be used to treat and prevent stomach ulcers and acid reflux, also known as GERD. There aren't many short-term side effects of these drugs, but if taken for a long period of time, PPIs can increase the risk of developing osteoporosis and bone fractures, infections with C. difficile, and pneumonia. And now we're all done with the PPIs. I better get back to the office to report my findings, but I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and check out our newest lessons. For more resources on this topic, including fact lists and interactive review images, click the image next to the More Here arrow. I'll see you next time.